Bolts Nation, welcome back to another season of the Bolts Block Party. I am your co-host, Greg Wolf, joined by my cohort, the amazing Braden Coburn. Cohort. Cohort. You're my cohort. I mean, I'm going to keep it real, man. We have a sponsor this year. Thank you to our friends at High Ally for their gracious support of the Bolts Block Party. We have a lot of cool stuff happening uh, this season with High Ally that we're uh, very excited, and we'll get into all of that uh, this season. But uh, it's good to see you. I hope you had a great summer. I know we really haven't had a whole lot of time to, to chit-chat, but uh, you look rested and refreshed. Are you feeling good to start this season? Kobe? I'm ready for a great year of Bolts uh, hockey. I'm, I'm ready to go. Meet the new, new, know. new guys. we got new guys coming on the show. Yeah, and, uh, it'll be good. We've got one here with us this afternoon. Uh, new to us, Bolts Nation, definitely not new to the NHL. Uh, Luke Glendening joins us here on the Bolts Block Party. Luke, it's amazing to have you. Uh, what's your thoughts so far of being in the Tampa Bay area? How's it treated you so far? I've loved it. It's been great. Um, you know, my, my family's getting settled in. Um, you know, I've loved meeting the guys, and uh, I'm really excited to be a part of it. So let's, uh, let's address the elephant in the room, Kobe, shall we? Um, we all know uh, hockey is a, is a game of pain, and hockey is a game of missing teeth. And obviously, we know Luke here, missing one. We know you have a sweet tooth, so I want to know, where did it go? <laughs> Every hockey player's got a good giblet story. Yeah, you know? so there's, there, there's a reason. There's... What is the story behind the, uh, the missing? Yeah, like, what, give us the Well, this out. was actually, it was brutal because it was uh, during that COVID year when we hadn't, okay. hadn't even started yet. Um, it was just like a summer skate, but it was in November uh, practice, okay. and I don't wear a mouth guard in practice, and I took one, knocked these two out, and then last year I got uh, I tipped a puck, at least this was in the game, <laughs> and it took that one out, so Brutal. three down. You lose one, and it's like they just <laughs> start, start just falling like, out. Like, yeah. domino like for me, like when I lost my – my first one, it was just like, it was just piano keys just falling out <laughs> after that. Just, Were you pissed because you're like, man, the one time I don't wear a mouthpiece in a practice and this is the, this is the retribution that I get. Well, for sure. And I was 30 years old. Like oh. I had made it 30 years, like all my teeth, uh, you know, you chip a few over the sure. years, but 30 years, I was pretty good. And then now I've, I've lost three in three years. So. Oh. Like you said, it's a domino effect <laughs> it's amazing. at this point. <laughs> like I think Vinny LeCavier, you know, he's got what, 1200, 1400 games yeah. in the NHL. Has all his teeth. Yeah. It's, it's amazing to me. But maybe skill guy, you know? I don't know. Skill <laughs> guy, stay to the corners. <laughs> Not a bruiser as much. Yeah. Okay, so what's the locker room name for, for our fans? I mean, because we know everybody's got a different locker room name. What's what's the Lukey name in there? Uh, Glenny. Glenny. Lukey. Lukey. I don't know. I threw it out there. I don't know. It's, yeah, Glenny. Usually. Glenny. Okay. You know Lukey? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I feel there, like man. that's like a little kid's name. Yeah. Lukey. Okay. That's what yeah, I was called when enough. I was little, yeah. Okay, fair Glenny. enough. So... Luke, give our, give our fans, um, you know, the, the Bolts Nation, because obviously we want to get familiar with your, your backstory, um, but you have a pretty unique one, obviously being a Michigan kid, uh, but being able to not just grow up in Michigan, but being able to play, you know, in Michigan, playing for the University of Michigan, playing for Detroit, it doesn't happen very often. So kind of give us the journey uh, from the youth, and obviously we know you were a three-sport athlete. We'll get into that as well, but kind of give us the, the journey for you uh, from youth to where you're at today. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's um, it's unusual now. Like back then, I don't think it was as unusual. But um, like I played house hockey growing up um, all the way until I went to high school. And then I played high school hockey in Michigan, which is fine, but it's not nothing great. Um, in I what way? Well, it's not like... Uh, it's not triple A or it's not yeah, like... It's, okay, it's considered enough. like maybe travel per Correct. se. Like right? it's not like the breeding ground for gotcha. college hockey players by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and I remember at like 16, I told my football coach, I'm like, I'm done not playing anymore. I'm just going to play hockey. So football told, wasn't for you. Told my parents, like, I'm going to go play juniors. And my dad's like, no, you're not. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Is that not? And they're like, why would you put all your eggs in one basket? Like, what if that basket breaks? Okay. Fair and, enough. uh, they told me then they're like, if you're good enough, they'll find you. And, um, so I ended up staying uh, I didn't even have anywhere to play juniors. That was just in my head. I was like, I'm going to go. I'm going to find something, somewhere to go. Okay. Um, so I played four years there. I had no options to play hockey anywhere. Um, but I, I had spoken to a prep school who's like, well, you could, you could play hockey too, but it, like, they want, we want you for football. Okay. And um, I was like, okay. Like, I have no idea. I'm a Midwest kid. Like, I don't know what prep schools are really. Um, so went to a boarding school out in Connecticut for a year, um, and played the football season. All the schools that were talking to me were like, ah, sorry, we're full. Like we're, mm. we're good. And I'm like, okay, perfect. Right. Um, played the whole hockey season. Like don't really hear from anyone. I'm like, this might've been a waste. Like, okay. um, 
And then the last game of the year, the coach is like, you picked a good game to play well. And I'm like, uh, who, who's here? Mm-hmm. Um, and it was Michigan who was there recruiting two of my teammates, um, not me at all. And uh, <laughs> they saw that I was from Michigan and they were like, well, we might have a preferred walk on spot. Okay. Um, and so eventually they, it goes on for a little bit. Um, the coach calls me and he's like, if you have anywhere else to go, I would go there. Oh, and wow. I'm like, well, I don't. So I'm coming. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I was promised a one year, uh, I guess you'd call it a tryout. Sure. Um, they said, you'll be on the team for one year. You're not going to play. You're just going to practice. And if okay. you're good enough in practice, then we'll Maybe keep you. Spot, yeah. And so the rest is history. Yeah. So you played four years, right? Yep. For Michigan. Um, then to the AHL. Wasn't drafted, right? Correct. I signed, uh, this is a little aside, but I signed a American League deal in Grand Rapids. Um, I was excited because I was like, oh, I get to play at home. Like, this is yeah. this is outstanding. Well, Blash was the coach. And, For those uh, who don't know Jeff Blash, yeah, one Jeff of our Blash coaches, we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, and he, he has told me this story. He couldn't wait to cut me. So, he, wanted a, you, he wanted you out. Yeah. And I was, like, so excited because I'm like, I'm in Grand Rapids. Like, this is going to be unreal. Um, he sent me down to the East Coast League. So I started in Toledo, um, was there for half a year. I got called up. And when you got Toledo, I, from what I understand was, <laughs> like, you were the 10th forward of 10 forwards in Toledo. Correct. Like, you were on the bottom of the totem pole. Correct. Like Again, I, which is kind of, like, seems like a little bit of a theme in yeah. your <laughs> hockey journey <laughs> here. Like. Yeah. It, uh, so, the, yeah, they dressed 10 forwards. I was the 10th forward. I didn't have a line. So I would, like, get out on the PK. It sometimes put me on the power play, like, just to stand in front of the net. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, actually, a centerman broke his wrist, and they're like, can you – can you play center? Like, I've played wing all through college. And I was like, yeah, of course I can. Yeah, throw me <laughs> <out>. <laughs> I The no answer idea. is always yes. <laughs> yes. Of course it is. Yeah, so then they moved me to center, um, and then I got called up. Um, well, the guys in Toledo are like, you got to fight. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to – I don't want to make it as a fighter. Like, I'm not – like – it's and the first first time I fought, next game I got called up. And they were all like, see, I told you. That's what you had to do. <laughs> Great, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I got called up. Um I scored on my first shift, my first shot uh, in Grand Rapids. And then Blash has told me since that he was just waiting to send me down every single day that I was there. He was like, we were just looking for something for you to do. Um, but we ended up winning that year. And yeah, you had like an immediate impact. You were kind of like, from what I've been told is you were like an energy guy. You kind of provided different things. And that team, like you said, you guys won, but you guys won the Calder Cup. Um, you beat Syracuse, mm-hmm. which yeah. is Tampa Bay's farm team. Yeah. yeah, It's kind of like a pretty unbelievable of story, right? Yeah, like I just came in and I was like, I don't have that much talent. Like I know, I knew that in college I didn't, but then. Yeah, but you worked your way from college. Like you were yeah. a walk-on. You became, by the time you left Michigan, you were the captain of the team. Right. Yeah, but like I still, I was like a captain because I was like, a, I worked really hard. Like I wasn't well, like a captain because I was scoring all the, you know, like. I wasn't a great, a great player in college. I was an average player in college. And so when I got to Grand Rapids, I was like, I got to find a way to stick. And yeah. the only way that I can do that is like, I'll work everyone I play against. Um, and that's just what I try to do and bring energy to the team. And I found a role there and that was. Right. So the transition from Grand Rapids in the American League to the NHL, um, from what I heard was the one thing that was keeping you down in the American League, they they you know they thought they might have a spot for you in the NHL, but it was you know he's not good at faceoffs. Yeah. You know that was the one kind of knock on you, and you took that to heart, didn't you? Oh, for sure. I mean, I was like, so after hearing my story, you can imagine I never thought I was going to play in the NHL. Like mm-hmm. I wanted to, but I never thought it was actually going to happen. Like sure. I'm like every kid. Like I five years old. Like what do you want to do? Like I want to play in the NHL. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But then you get like you know in high school. What do you want to do? Well, I I, I want to get to college somehow. Sure. And then I got there and like, you realize how much better guys are than you. And then you get to the East coast and guys are still better. I'm the 10th forward. And I get to the American league and guys are still way better than me. And I'm like, man. So when they told me that they're like, you got to get better at faceoffs. I'm like, I can do that. Mm-hmm. Like I will figure out a way, whatever it takes to do that. Um, and so I remember my first year I was like 45% and they were like, this, this isn't going to do it. Right. <laughs> well, you just started playing right. center. Well, like, correct. Really, yeah. Yeah, but so I, I mean, it was something that I had to work with coaches on, like video, and then I would have to go out and practice and do it over and over and over again. 
um, until I was comfortable in what I was doing. Well, they say to, to master something, you have to put in 10,000 hours to be considered a master. 10,000 face-offs. I feel like, have you put in 10,000 face-offs? In your I mean, career? I've tried, but okay, they're well. still like, I'm still learning, right? Like it's, uh, of course. well, I always say like, they want to win too. Like you go into a face-off and they're, you're like, they're trying to win as well. And it's like, so it's a battle and that that's part of what I love about it. And the battle continues 706 career games now did you foresee that going back to those <laughs> university of michigan days the ahl that you would hit that mark i mean we're all, we obviously the season hasn't even started yet here really but 706 career games that's a pretty remarkable milestone considering the underdog story yeah i mean i never thought this would happen you know i always say i've probably played the most games with the least amount of points but uh <laughs> <laughs> you know it's it's been an unbelievable journey so far and you know i'm excited for what's ahead as well so the face-offs, uh, like Braden was saying, you've become one of the absolute best in the league. Um, describe, obviously, your game. We haven't been able to see a lot of your game. Obviously, you as an opponent of the Lightning, but for our fans, besides the face-off circle, what are some of the strengths um, or the, the style of play that you could describe to our fans, your style? Uh, I just try to bring energy. Um, you know, I still think that I, I try to work as hard as I can. Um, I can still skate. Um, be physical, block shots. Um, I mean, I found a way to do the things that a lot of guys don't like to do, and, uh, you know, it's, it's kept me around. So through, throughout your career, you've been an excellent checker. Uh, we talked a lot about face-offs, yep. but I think you're more than a face-off guy. You're not, you're not just a face-off specialist. You've killed penalties. You've paid the price. You've been an annoying guy to play against. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can attest to that. Yeah. Um, but that comes with the price. And, you know, we all know that, you know, when you play that hard game, it takes a toll on your body. What kind of, like, uh, challenges have you had to overcome with injuries and stuff like that? Well, I think you'll know, but, like, when I was younger, I did nothing. Like, I just was like, I, I can just show up and play a game. And now it's like, okay, like, I got to get ready. I got to warm things up. I got to move around, you know, like your shoulders start to, to wear on you and, you know, like your hands. And there's just stuff that before I was like, that's, like I would see guys doing it and I was like, what are you doing? Right, right. <laughs> now I'm like, now I'm the guy that people are looking at right. me like, what are you doing, man? And I'm like, I got to warm this thing up. Like it doesn't sure. just start like it used to. Are there any um, superstitions that you have like on a game day or routines that like you have to stick with this every game or every game day? No, not Nothing. really. Like I'll, I'll always try to eat the same thing just because I know how my body feels. But um, I, I've read some books of like coaches who would take their – their players on different routes to games or um, would make them late on purpose just because it's like that. It really makes no difference to to throw off their routines or yeah. trying to make them mentally the tough, right? Yeah. Yeah. Trying to throw okay. like a wrench in the routine just, just to make sure you... that they aren't just like mentally, you know, vanilla. Yeah. Cause not everything's going to go correctly all the time. Right. And you've got to find a way to be like, okay, I can still play. The adaption. Of course. Um, congratulations. You have a new baby girl. Yeah. Thank you. Dad life. Thank you. Uh, how's dad life <laughs> been treating you? It's been awesome. It's been, uh, it's honestly the coolest thing I've ever, uh, it's ever happened to me, but, uh, we're learning like she's 10 weeks old. So we're learning, yeah. learning on the fly. Um, you know, we had a move in there as well. So, yeah. uh, we have a two year old great Dane as well. So we've got a lot going on at our house right now. The Great Dane, that is always an interesting... That's a massive... That's a, another human being size <laughs> yeah. thing in your yeah. home. Yeah. So I, I remember uh, I had a teammate, former Tampa Bay Lightning, Matt Walker. So he came, he got traded from here to us in Philly. And it was a day off and I was at the rink and he was at the rink and he brought his Great Dane with him and we're sitting in the parking lot and we're talking and just kind of ch chit-chatting and catching up. And that Great Dane took a crap oh, right no. next to me no. and i was like <laughs> reason number one i will never have a great dane he took like a garbage bag to pick that thing up you know my dogs are probably medium size to small size and yeah. and and walks had to grab like this like shovel like and i was like i'm sure they're great dogs but i'm sure it, it would yeah, put an x I mean, on I'm me sure he knows but i heard they're that. the best personality oh they're great, great but you are correct about that uh, <laughs> that is and i'm sure part. what they eat too like that's a that's a big mouth to feed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It keeps us, uh, good keeps with us the baby. baby. Like that's unreal. Like it's been there. She's been awesome, but good family dog. It, yeah. But it's, you know, people come over and they're like, Oh my gosh, but <laughs> I'm so used to it at right. this point that I just like, yeah, it's their dog. So what, like, what's, uh, what are some of the things you're really looking forward to, uh, being a new dad? Um, I'm just excited to watch her grow up. Honestly, yeah. like I, 
I mean, you think you're ready and then they come and you're not ready at all. And, um, I, what, I don't know what to say. Is it something like the days go slow, but the years go fast or right. something, but right. I just feel like, I mean, it's been 10 weeks. I feel like she was born yesterday. So, and how is that figuring into your schedule as a new dad? I mean, cause we know <laughs> babies don't, they're not on your schedule as far as sleeping and like you getting proper rest. I mean, how have you been able to maneuver around being a new dad and also a new member of a well, new team? I'm going to pump up my wife. She's been an absolute rock star. Um, and she has told me there's no use in both of us being tired. So <laughs> I've slept, I've slept great. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they do the heavy lifting for sure. Of they course, do the heavy lifting. So yeah. Thank you to all the uh, player wives out there. Couldn't do it without you. <laughs> So you've been in Tampa for a little bit. Um, you know, you, I know you got here before training camp. What kind of things are you guys kind of getting into? You guys been to the beach? Uh, did you guys go check out the Rays or the Bucks yet? Or anything we like that? haven't done much. We've been unpacking our house, um, just trying to get settled as much as we can. Uh, we're obviously really looking forward to getting out and getting about getting around, but uh, we haven't done much yet. Yeah. So I actually saw um, the video that you done. And if you haven't been to TampaBayLightning.com. Uh, Gabby Shirley does a fantastic job with the new and blue episode. So you got a chance to uh, try Ulele, yep. which is a great restaurant here uh, in Tampa Bay. And you, when you were eating oysters, you bit into a pearl. You bit into an oyster that had a pearl, did, correct? Yeah. Did you know the meaning of the, the true meaning of that? Because if you didn't, I looked it up for you, Luke, of what that actually means. And I'm going to give it to you because I think it's very relative to you now making your way here to Tampa. So it actually means if you find a pearl and you actually bite into it like you did, it means you're, you're about to hit a streak of good luck. It says when you find a pearl in your oyster, understand that it is a rare experience. Research has shown it only happens in one to uh, one in 10,000 people will ever find a pearl in an oyster because pay attention to the fact that something spiritual is happening at around you during the moment of discovery. Finding pearls in oysters creates a space for you. It opens you up to new levels and realms of accomplishment you never thought possible. Furthermore, finding pearls in an oyster debunks the word impossible. It lets you know that impossibility is a myth. Therefore, embrace the message and try to use it to run your race. Wow. Let's, let's go. Greg I mean, Wolf, big fortune I'm, cookie guy right here. <laughs> big fortune cookie guy. guy. Yeah, let's but go. I saw that, <laughs> and I literally like looked at your story, and I'm like, this could not have happened to a better dude at a better time. That's, so That's wild. I you need that. to take that one. I'll give you the piece of paper. You can bring it home and show your wife. So, I mean, that's kind of encompassing of like the moment for you now. Being here in Tampa, you find a cool place to hang out. You're in the middle of a segment, and that happens to you. So I think the good luck is going to be on this guy's side love this that. day, man. So, I love, love that. Awesome. Uh, I know you're a tattoo guy. Is this, uh, is that, I mean, how many tattoos are we rocking nowadays? Um, I got like three quarters of a sleeve here and then one over here. And so do you take it very personal? Cause I know everybody's tattoo experiences are different, but <laughs> things on your body, not from a drunken night with your U, UM buddies hanging out or, or is it a, a few of those or like, do your spe have specific meaning? Uh, a little mix, not, they're not a drunken night, but okay. there's, there's some that I, Wish I didn't have and <laughs> some, some that any I enjoy. Fun backstories on any of them? No, He's not going to share them with no, us. It's just, it's not so. Not, not, I don't even know where to where to go. What about uh, Glennie? What about hobbies? Um, we had Brian Breesman in here earlier. He was telling us you are a huge college football fan, not just Wolverines, like just kind of everything. You Saturdays are yep. for the boys, I guess, for they say, but you love your college football. I do love college football. Um, I think I kind of grew up with that. My dad played at Bowling Green, okay. um, which isn't a huge school, but like we yeah. would always pay attention to the college football. Fullback too? Or yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah he was a bigger bigger fullback though like a real size fullback um and <laughs> the then, micro fullback <laughs> yeah and then my brother actually played at uh, division two but he played at hillsdale college never heard of um, it okay yeah it's, shout to hillsdale yeah but um <laughs> so like saturdays were always just about football in my family like we would we would always watch and i i've kind of kept it going so i've i've really enjoyed that well who do you like what's uh give us a little college I mean, michigan football. Where are they second now in the yeah, like, country no, no or number two, man. yeah michigan's um i just like i love the good games i love the unpredictability of college football like you just i mean the miami game this week was a Dude, great like did you see that all they Kobe? yeah all they needed to do is take, take a, a knee, knee. Yeah. how does that they'll, they'll never ever live that down no but Forever. that's that's college football to yep. me. like in the nfl that never happens like sure. they're taking a knee it's over right but like college football you don't know no and there's been a a lot of those, I mean, we're very early into the college football season, but there's been a lot of upsets and like the top 20 have gone down. Like 
he's right. The unpredictability, I think, makes it a little bit more fun. Yeah, than and the, it's just exciting because I like I I loved like what Deion Sanders has done at Colorado, like yeah. the hype around him, and obviously they had you know two tough losses, of but course. like. I don't know. It's just, it's fun. He re he re-energized the program that sure. was not good at all. So, right. I mean, again, yeah. college football has a mystique. What about colleges you can't stand? Because there's got to be some <laughs> of those. Like, I have a friend that went to Michigan, oh, and, like, State. I don't think you can say, like, Notre Dame in their house. Okay, yeah. Well, oh, like, <laughs> so, well you have to understand about me, like, I had no idea I was going to go to Michigan, so it wasn't, like, a dream school of mine. Like, I wasn't... It was just opportunity presents like, itself. Yeah, like it the was only the, opportunity. Correct. <laughs> like I remember when I was younger, like going to you know college hockey games, and my dad's like, "I hate Michigan. Look how cocky they are." Right. And then it was the only school I had a chance to go to, and I'm like, "Sorry, Dad. Like it's <laughs> it's all I got, man." Right. Um, so I don't have that. Like you know, some people are just like they hate these other schools. Right. I don't really have that. Um, I mean, obviously. Uh, you know, like Ohio State, I would rather see them lose. Yeah. Um, but of course. like that's that's pretty much it. That's your biggest rival. Didn't you um, win a championship playing football when you went in, to hi in high school? We did, and you played at Ford Field. Yep. And that still wasn't enough to drive you to like <laughs> stick with football. Like, I mean, you won no, a championship, no? Yeah, like it was fun. I had a blast. Yeah, um, you know, I was a part of a really good team. Um, and but no, I just. I'm so was it a here. dual dream when you were a kid, like hosting the Stanley cup or like the Lombardi trophy? trophy yeah. Like, was it kind of like, I'll do both. I'll do the Deion yeah, Sanders. Like when you you're know? a kid, you think you can do anything. Yeah. And, and I like, I still talk about, like, I remember going to a morning football game. My dad would hand me a blue power aid and we'd drive right to the rink. And right. then I would just get my stuff on and go play. And that was what we did. And I know now that's not really like the, right. you know, it's the specialization and stuff like that. But when I was a kid, like, half our team would hop in the van and we'd go over it. and do it. Do you think that's important now? Like you see like kids and you know, they only play one sport from the age of they're like six mm. years old up. Yeah. And, and you played three at a really high level baseball as well. Right. Right. What are you going to do with your kids? Like, what, yeah. what, what do you think? I don't want to get on my soapbox here, but uh, I do. Like, <laughs> I, I, it, I, I know, but up. I do think it's really important to play multiple sports. I think like when I got to Michigan, I was uh, 18 years old and they said like, you're here because you're an athlete, and we, we're hoping that that athleticism can turn into hockey. Okay. Um, and I just think, like, the percentage of people who make it is so small. Mm -hmm. Why not enjoy the things you're doing? Like, you don't I – mean, and I'm not saying that kids don't, but, like, you know, there's all these specialization, this, that. I'm like, you can become an athlete by doing multiple different sports. Um, you meet different groups of friends. You're going to find different challenges. I, and to me, that's what you really want your kids to experience. Right. It's full round development. Yeah, I agree I think, with that. I, I, think mean. You, I think you learn like different things. Like you probably things you learn from football, you can translate to hockey and, and vice versa and through baseball. I don't know. It's just, I, I, I mean, I think looking back, I mean, I know when I was a kid, it was soccer, it was baseball, it was basketball, it was football. Like you're right. And it was different seasons, right? So you play fall soccer, or fo football, but uh, you're right. I think. And podcast. And podcast. But you're right. I think you take certain things from those experiences and you can put those to use. You may learn something in football, a mental thing that you can put to, to use in hockey and, and vice versa. Let's fast forward now to the lightning. Obviously the new guy in the locker room. Um, what, as the new guy, are some of the adjustments that you have to make coming into a new team like this? Uh, yeah, I think when I come in, I'm pretty quiet. Like, I just kind of watch. And, you know, we've had some unbelievable battles. I guess when Detroit was kind of on the decline and these guys were on the yeah. upswing, he put one right over my shoulder for a – for a one nothing, that one? Uh, vaguely, was, was vaguely, <laughs> vaguely. There's so many that I can't remember them all. But <laughs> game game seven in the first round. Mm. Um, but yeah. you know, like you, you've had so many battles, and there's been so much success here that when I come in, like I just want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And so you just kind of find your find where you are, and I'll just sit and watch. And so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I, I always found that when you played against guys like yourself, and not not saying you in particular, but do you have this uh, attitude like I would develop this, what this person on the other team was like, yeah. you know, like this guy's a prick or this guy's a, you know, so-and-so or whatever it is. And then you become teammates with them and you're like, wow, that guy's way different than I thought. Right. Is there any guys in the lightning dress room that you can have that kind of thought well, process with? Well, I, I don't know about like that, but you're just like, <laughs> yeah, like, like Hetty, for example, like okay. he's a huge man yep. and I like, I'm small. So I would always be like, that's my guy. I'm going to get him. And like, <laughs> but he would, you know, like we would go at it and, but then you meet him and I'm like, 
nicest I'm guy s- ever. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. Like that wasn't, <laughs> you know, that wasn't uh, so nice of me. Sure. Um, but I think, you know, exactly what you're saying is they're not a lot of times what they're, they are on the ice. Right. Um, but I also have so much respect for them that it's like, hey, like I'm here to work and right. I, I don't know. What but, was that call like when you, when you found out you're coming to Tampa? I mean, were you like, I mean, where, where did it happen? Like how, what was that whole yeah, day like for you? I was actually, um, I was in a infant CPR class. Um, so okay. <laughs> when I took Dad the call, life. but, um, yeah, I mean, just <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. trying to learn. Um, but just so excited to be a part of, um, you know, I've been on the wrong side of it for a lot of years. So, um, was so excited for the opportunity to be on the other side. What about this lightning team or even specific players, um, <clears throat> that you remember playing against? Obviously you said heady, but were there other guys that, um, you know, really stuck out to you that did God dang it. Like, like these are just the elite guys. Of yeah. This team I mean, well, I mean the, the top seven guys you have here, like I've played against them for 10 years now and it's just taking a beating every single night. <laughs> like it, it's kind of like, all right, enough. Maybe I join, join their side. Yeah. Um, what, what about Russians? I, I want to talk about Russians because you played with a extremely super talented Russian with Pavel Datsut. Yep. Mm-hmm. And now you got offensive Kucherov. Dimino, Kucherov. Like what's, what is it about those two that you would say is very similar about them and maybe different? I think the similarity is like they just work on their craft like relentlessly. Like they just are, it's it's always looking for a way to get better. And like I played with Datsuk at the end of his career, um, and and I've told this story before. But after practice, he would grab one guy at a time and just do one on one battles. And guys would get so tired, he would go through like five of us. Like wow. he would always grab young guys because they were the ones More like, energy, right? yeah, sure, whatever, right. yeah. yes, sir. Like, yeah. what can I do for you? Um, you know, but then you, you see Cooch and, like, stick handling, or he's taking a shot from the same spot. It's just, like, they just work on their craft relentlessly, and I think that's why they're so good. Absolutely. You've seen it. All right, so I know we're getting close to running out of time here. So, being that he's a Michigan guy, Kobe, we're going to start the high lie factor fiction, all right? So, okay. these are all <laughs> Michigan-related questions. Oh, Simply geez. fact or fiction. Well, if you're born and raised there, you should know these answers. I mean, if you did anything in school, I hope you know the answers, and there's only <laughs> six of them. So let's hopefully you get a passing grade here. Right. Luke Glendenning, here we go. Fact or fiction, powered by High Life. First up, the Michigan State bird is the Blue Jay. Fact or fiction? That is fiction. What is it? Do you the know? Robin. It is the Robin. He's one for one. Ding! <laughs> Next up, former president Gerald Ford grew up in Michigan. Fact. Grand Rapids. F- this guy knows the stuff. He is two well, for two. Yeah, yeah. It's hometown. Okay. You gotta so know that. Making sure. <laughs> All right. Fago and A and W, both brands of pop soda. If you call it pop, do you call it pop or soda? Pop. Okay. So Fago and A and W brands of pop were originated in Michigan. I think that's also fact. It's actually fiction. Mm. There's a little trick one. It is Fago, but the other one is Verner's, oh. not A and W. That's got them. It that sounds one. like Chinese to me. But. <laughs> any point at any point in Michigan, you are never more than sixty miles away from a Great Lake. Fact or fiction? Sixty miles. Uh. Fiction. It's correct. It's actually 85 miles. I was going to say. He knew his stuff. He had to think about that one. All right. Coming down the wire here. Last two. Michigan produces more blueberries than any other state. Fact. It's actually apples, not blueberries. And finally, <laughs> Luke. Are you <laughs> keeping, <laughs> just, am, I, am I supposed to be <laughs> keeping <laughs> score here? I, 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 Come on. I didn't know. My, this is the first Jeez. time we've been doing three and this. Two, three and two. Dang, Michigan has the only authentic operating Dutch windmill in the U.S. I'd say that's fact. That is a fact. Do you know where it is? Holland. I don't know. I don't know. Is Holland a place in Michigan? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, there you go. I love Holland, it. Michigan. Go look at the uh, wow. world's most authentic. Wow. I, don't know if, I don't know if that's true, but I... It is. It was on the, it was on the internet, so it must be true. So, <laughs> must be anyways, true. The internet. Yeah. The internet. Big internet guy. <laughs> I'm a big internet guy. What about, what about uh, Glenny? I know uh, music guy. Are you a big music festival yeah, guy? I, yeah. I, I think that music. the first time, Greg, you the first time we met, it. we met at uh, the Big Sky Music Festival yep. in, uh, in Montana, and... Uh, 
Who was the there? He, the headliner was uh, Dwight Yoakam, yeah, uh, Coulter there. Wall. Uh, was like a Child, Childers was there. Yeah. Um, Brothers Osborne. Yeah. yeah. It was. It was. It was, it was, it was fun. Eclectic was, lineup there. Yeah. It was. It was, it was good. It was a good time. That was awesome. And what do you remember about that? Were you doing shots with this? You know guy? what? Uh, I think uh, we were both pretty glossy eyed uh, <laughs> for the most part. It was pretty hot, so yeah. we had to hydrate uh, quite yeah. a bit. Fair um, enough. But a good time, and I was impressed by uh, this guy and just. Uh, we're talking about a mutual teammate, uh, Luke Wachowski. Yep. You know, just kind of what? Great man, yeah. I love Luke when oh, he was awesome. here. Cool, was yeah, awesome yeah, time. Man, so yeah, good man, Luke. Listen, we know uh, you've been here all day practice, and uh, we got big things on the horizon. But uh, behalf of myself and Kobe, we thank you for uh, taking the time. Our friends at Highlight as well. Thank you for being on the block party, and we wish you nothing but great success this season on the bolts. And uh, we look forward to seeing you out in the ice. All right, thanks so much, guys. Thanks, Luke. Appreciate you guys checking in. And uh, of course, we'll be back very soon with another episode of the Bolts Block Party. Thanks to our friends at High Alive.